Welcome to part 1.5 of the earthworm castings versus soil experiment. In the first video, we actually tested earthworm castings and potting soil. In this video, we're going to be testing this product here. This is called Vitality, and it's basically just a liquid derived from earthworm castings. And to test this, we got two different pots here. Uh, they're, they're both identical. They both have the same potting soil in them. And uh, I sprouted some seeds here, uh, tomato seeds, as you can see. And what we're going to be doing very simply is just watering one of these with this Vitality and then the other one with tap water just to see if there's enough uh, nutrients in this alone to make a plant grow. Uh, so what we're going to be doing here going forward is uh, calling these out. I'm going to be leaving uh, just a couple, uh, getting rid of the ones that aren't growing it quite as quickly, and I'll be narrowing it down to one plant to try to make it as even as possible so that the, both plants are basically identical. Uh, and just for reference, uh, the potting soil mix here has a starting pH of uh, 5, and when I use my tap water, which has a neutral pH, and water it, uh, this soil starts to become more of a pH of 6.5. And this product here is also a new, neutral pH, so there won't be any pH differences when I water this. All right, it has only been four days, and you can see these tomato plants are growing very quickly and also very healthy looking. And I've been thinning them out on pretty much a daily basis here, and you can see there's only two plants per pot at this point. So what I'm going to do here is remove the smaller plant in each and leave the larger one, this one here and this one here. And that's just because these seem to have the most growth figure, and I think that'll do well for this experiment. Now, I have not been giving it the product yet at all, uh, and the reason for that is I didn't want to change the growth rate of one pot versus the other so that it'd be more easy to choose uh, two identical plants. Uh, I didn't want, you know, if I was to put it, say, in this one here, and then all of these grew taller, well, then I would, there'd be no way to know which ones are actually genetically predisposed to basically be the same. So at this point, I'm going to remove those two, and I'm going to start watering uh, the one on the right here, and we'll see how it goes. So as I said, I'm going to be watering the plant on the right with this Vitality product, and these are the directions for its use. And I'm not going to be following these directions exactly. I'm going to be giving it a little bit more than what this says. And that's perfectly fine because with earthworm casting derived nutrients or just earthworm castings in general, you can't use too much. You're not going to burn your plant out uh, by using more uh, like you would with other types of plant foods. So what I'm going to be doing is using one teaspoon per one cup instead of the two cups. So I'm going to be using twice the amount for the what for what this says is general use, but that's still less than what you call the boost rate or the first feed. That's quite a bit there, two tablespoons per two cups. Um, and certainly a lot less than what they call the supercharge rate, which is five tablespoons for two cups. That's quite a bit. Although, like I said, it's not going to hurt it. It's just pretty much wasteful at that point. There's not really any need for it. So I'll be uh, watering the plant on the right with uh, this measuring cup here and then doing the same thing for the plant on the left with just tap water. All right, it has been three weeks since the last segment of this video, and it is now time for an update. I have been watering these plants every two to three days, and I have been giving the plant here on the right the Vitality, and I've been giving it the uh, one teaspoon per cup of water, and that's what I've been watering it with, is one cup every time I water it. Um, same thing with the plant here on the left, just without the Vitality. And you can see here that the plants, at least from what I've been observing over the past uh, week and a half or so, or maybe the past week, is they've kind of been stunted in their growth and I'm really starting to see the signs of deficiency. And you know, the classic nitrogen, uh, nitrogen deficiency with the lower leaves here. Um, I'm not really seeing much different in deficiency from one versus the other. They both seem to be about the same. Um, and they're actually already starting to produce these little flowers on the top. So I don't know, maybe these, these might even produce tomatoes. Uh, I doubt it. So yeah, anyways, it's not looking very good for the Vitality product. And actually, shortly after I started giving the plant on the right, it seemed like it stopped growing as fast as it was before, and this one kind of overtook it. Uh, so I'm not really sure what that's about. But what I'm gonna do now is, uh, you can see how I shook it here. I shake this up very, very well when I use it because this stuff here settles out. Um, if you don't shake it, I mean, if you go to use this and you only shake it just like a little bit like this and pour it in a, uh, uh, a measuring cup or whatever, it's uh, you may not be getting the full product because this makes like a sludge in the bottom, so you shake it really well. Uh, so I have been doing that. But what I'm going to do now, before I went off on that tangent there, I'm going to be 
uh, increasing this to the two tablespoons, or I'm sorry, one tablespoon per cup. So I'm going to increase it significantly and see if this plant here can get boosted because it does say on that uh, little product sheet um, for, for stressed plants to increase their, or to make them healthy again, basically. So we're going to try that uh, and then we'll come back and see what happens. Okay, it has been two more weeks since I started giving the plant on the right here the extra amount of vitality, the one tablespoon per cup of water. And since then, I have not noticed any difference in growth or plant health whatsoever. The plant on the left here that has been only getting tap water is still the larger plant and sorta of kinda of looks a little bit healthier, I would say. Maybe it's just because it's bigger. But they both have the same deficiencies, nitrogen deficiency. This one over here on the right has pretty much lost its lower leaves completely. And uh, the plant on the left here that's only been getting the tap water is just, you know, it's, it's got more flowers and everything on it, while this one only has maybe two or three, and that's about it. Uh, we're not taking these into the fruiting phase. These are Roma tomatoes. They're never going to do well in these pots anyways, maybe if they're cherry tomatoes, but that's not really what we're looking at here. Uh, the point really was just to see if there would be any differences in growth, and it's proving here that this liquid earthworm castings uh, or just earthworm castings in general is not really a substitute for plant food. Now, I'm sure the earthworm castings by itself can support uh, microbial life, so it might have uh, other benefits in there if uh, it is taken care of in a different way. But in this case, it's pretty much showing that this by itself doesn't really make much of a difference. Uh, but we're not ending the experiment here. This is not the end of it. That's why there's going to be a part three. And in the next video, part three, we're going to be using earthworm castings in one pot and the potting soil in the other. And the main difference between this, the last video and this video is I'm going to be giving it plant food. And we're going to see which one actually does better so we can see if with the addition of plant food in the earthworm and the earthworm castings, if we can get a better uh, growth rate on a better uh, healthier looking plant. So before we end this video, we're actually going to go through and just kind of test the soil pH and see if there might be any little bit of a difference in there. I don't think there's going to be a big difference, but we'll move on to testing the pH right now. Okay, here are the samples. What I did here is I scraped away the surface layer of the soil on each, and I scooped up about an eighth of a teaspoon, about a half inch down in the soil. And the one on the right here is the Vitality. And I also used RODI water for this so that the pH is easily influenced. So what we're going to do is just take this little pipette here and suck up a little bit of the water. We'll fill this about halfway up. That's good enough there. And we'll add the liquid here. Four drops is enough. Let's let that sit for a second. And if we look on here, that's right about where it should be. That's right about a pH of 6.5, which is perfect for soil conditions. And we'll go ahead and test the one on the left here. I gotta rinse that out. All right, just to save some time in the video, I went ahead and rinsed out the pipette with more RODI water and the container, and I already did the test. And you can see here that the pH is pretty much identical to the other one at about 6.5 there. So, Pretty much shows that there was no pH difference as I expected. And um, I think that's going to be it for this video. We're going to go ahead and move on to part three and hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.